our respected elder brother Muhammad Ali, the chairman of the GPU Foundation, our very respected and distinguished scholars, speakers, elders, brothers and sisters, and our loving young children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Couldn't hear much of the reply, but I'm sure they have heard they did. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan. I know it's going to be a wonderful day today and tomorrow, listening to a number of our speeches and talks, very distinguished speakers from different parts of the world, and we are all very much looking forward to it. I'm deeply honored to be with you once again after an absence of about 13 years when we last had the wonderful event of global peace and unity. We cannot thank enough to our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for giving us this opportunity and being part of this wonderful tradition that has been going on for a number of years, although we have had a break for some time, whose main purpose is to bring in people of different background, scholars, students, elders and young, not just from the UK, but we are truly blessed to have with us amongst the most recognized eminent speakers from different parts of the world. This itself is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody talks about the issue of unity in our daily lives. And we try to bring that important message which our Prophet has been mentioning to us and the speakers earlier on also mentioned how the Ummah can come together and when there is an area of one part of our body that aches, the entire body feels about it. And today, in this difficult time, when the crisis that we are seeing happening, the tragedy that is prevailing, the continued genocide that we see in 24-7 in front of us, is indeed very painful for each one of us. And of course, we are reminded of a very important hadith in the message from the Holy Quran. That as believers, we have faith in what Allah wills, and it is a matter of time before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us this relief, the end to this oppression, the end of this genocide, the killings that we see mercilessly taking along over the last year or so. But not only that, it's a continuation of a number of decades. As we all know, the crisis did not begin on the 7th of October, but goes back to the occupation, the illegal occupation against all international law has been on for a number of decades. And we see that coming through. But we will be hearing more on the whole issue of Palestine and Gaza, as we must mention, as we must reflect on it, because it's issue of humanity. And today we see, sadly, rather quickly, disappearing from our dictionary, the feeling, the responsibility of the international community including our government, and we cannot be complicit to this terrible um, tragedy and the criminality that is taking place. But my respected elders and brothers and sisters, there are two messages that I wish to convey to you today, which has been repeated time and again. And it is important and crucial for us to be aware of it our role as British Muslims in the UK. Of course, we know over the years 
how the community has been brought in from the fringe, from the margins. And today, alhamdulillah, we are playing that key role into the mainstream. And we should do, as Muslims, as good citizens, as ambassadors of Islam, we have a responsibility to ensure that the truth and justice message needs to go along. Our role in the society, within business, in community work, in government services, whatever, we have to project our positiveness, the great work that as Muslims we are demanded of, that we should continue. I just need to reflect back to way back in 1997, an important period in the life of British Muslims when so much was expected of the community. And of course, including the government. It is important to reflect that period because today has been mentioned by some of the speakers as well, the issue of engagement is so crucial. Why shouldn't the Muslim community, its democratically elected bodies, national bodies, be engaged with? After all, they have come through a process which is admired and respected by everybody. The issue of its independence, the issue of its procedures, the issue of its constitution, and more importantly, the mandate from the Muslim community. And I recall way back in 1997, when the then incoming Prime Minister pledged to work closely with faith communities to deliver the changes we needed to push forward the growth, prosperity, and equality for all societies. It was a period of tremendous positive change, with many policy initiatives devised that made Britain one of the best places to be for a Muslim. We are proud of that record of achievement, and I'm hopeful that we can regain, we can regain the momentum of those days that have, in the intervening periods, been badly neglected. The government has now set out this plan to achieve security, fairness, and opportunity for all, through, for example, banning exploitative practices and enhancing employment rights, adopting mental health reforms, investing in victim support, and tackling anti-social behaviors. And it sets out an ambitious target of having violence against women and girls. And it's also placed to enshrine the full right to equal pay in law to tackle wage disparities on grounds of race and disability. These are all issues that effectively host the voice for many years of petitioning for changes to address health, economic, and educational inequalities. But my respected friends, the recent newly elected PM Starmer has also set on an agenda, and it is one British Muslims can support. The real question is, is the government ready to work with us to achieve these aims as proposed in the pre-election letter of faith leaders? And I mean, work with us. This is to say with Muslim community organizations that hold the confidence of their communities. Public service should be at the heart of our faith, Islamic faith, and an underpinning of our upbringing. It is something that people of all faith communities will recognize in their own personal histories. Faith is all about public service and the common good. 
at a time when we are faced with enormous challenges, domestically and internationally, it is my deep desire to see the government fully appreciate that British Muslim communities are British. This is home. This is our country of community, of livelihoods, and our aspirations for a better future for ourselves and for our society. I pray our presence will not willfully be ignored, nor problematized for expedience, but seen as we want to be seen, as faithful citizens, conscientious contributors, and partners in the work that lies ahead. It is important for the government, and particularly our media, need to be aware of the great positive work the Muslim community has achieved over the last number of decades. Not many people be aware that the Muslim community has contributed to the economy around 70 billion pounds. And these are our contribution as responsible citizens. 25 million pounds of that comes from the Muslim businesses. We are only 4 million, but alhamdulillah, the progress over the years has continued and moves ahead. We cannot forget the fantastic contribution made in the NHS by the Muslim community, in the transport system, in the civil service. You name it, every sector of our society in Britain, the Muslims are playing that important role. And therefore, it is important when there's so much of stigmatization, denigration of the Muslim community, that we cannot afford to move backwards. We have to move forward and work through it. My time is nearly up, but there is one final message that I would like to give. That we cannot, as Muslims, be identified in a particular spectrum of security, of terrorism or so. Let us look at that very positive work that the community has been doing. And it is crucial that has to be understood and the responsibility lies for every one of us, wherever we are. It cannot be left to the Muslim organizations like the Muslim Council of Britain who are doing everything possible to get the message across. But we ourselves as individual persons have a responsibility to make sure that we contribute towards that positiveness by engaging at our local level, at the national level, and make sure that it comes through all the time. Jazakumullah khairun to all of you for being with us. We have a lovely program ahead of us today with some wonderful entertainment. And of course, we look forward to um, hearing from some of our eminent speakers this afternoon and today. Have a wonderful time. Let's go with that confidence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us as Muslims. We remain positive, we remain optimistic in terms of what needs to be done, and we will not be deterred with any such negativity, the denigration, the stigmatization that takes place on the Muslim community. Allah is great, Allah will protect us. Jazakumullah khairan.